And welcome to another edition of the Belmont Middle and High School Building Committee video updates. I am Diane Miller, member of the committee. I am here today with our chair, Bill Lavallo, and with Mike McAllister, also a member of the committee and the director of human capital for the Belmont Public Schools. Uh, today we are standing in what is um, the Learning Resource Center. That's the name that we use for what is essentially the library. Um, and I think we are titling this episode, Not Your Typical Library. So we're going to talk about this space and all the cool things that ha are happening here and what is not typical about it. So Bill, do you want to kick right. us off with sort of where we've come from with the old building? Yeah, so we have to just step back, you know, and why or what is functionally different about our Learning Resource Center. And to really uh, answer that question, we have to go back to the old high school, mm -hmm. right? And built 50 years ago for your traditional library use, Mike, it wasn't working <laughs> later in its life, right? We, we saw that as we were touring the old high school. Yeah, it was, it was an interesting space. I mean, it was a big space. It was cavernous. It was two floors, sort of the top mezzanine. No one was really sure what to do. At times, it was a study space, and at times, it was the technology space, and at times, it was a computer space. Uh, but even downstairs, it was really, uh, it was a building, much like we've talked a lot before about sometimes learning happened despite the building, and that was certainly the case at the, with the library. I think that uh, it was one of the two major centers. You know, back when we used to schedule with a lot of free spaces or a lot of free times in the schedule, it was one of the major places kids went. They went to the cafeteria and they went to the library. Um, but really, there was a need for more collaborative space, and that was the main the main problem with it. Um, kids were looking for different uses. I remember there was queuing outside yeah. because there was so many people that wanted to get in. They they couldn't get in. You took all the volumes out, mm. right? Right. right. You know, we, more seats in. you think about all the ways we tried to make space. We literally removed books from the, from the space just to be able to fit more kids. And in even those spaces, it was very much a feeling of retrofitting it. So it was never quite a perfect space. There were two sort of collaboration rooms at the back, pretty overtaxed. You know, a lot of kids were trying to fight to get in there, but uh, they were never quite available. And, they, and, and even the sound, it just wasn't a perfect space. So uh, it, was, it was a less than perfect design, for sure. So through the visioning, mm -hmm. we were all part of that mm -hmm. visioning back in 2017, I mm -hmm. think it was, uh, we heard of what was the desire. Um, breakout spaces for different modalities. Yeah. Uh, quiet space, collaborative, uh, you know, team collaborative space, as well as just open collaborative yeah. space. We got yeah, it all, right? I, I think that, you know, when I think about the school, so much of what we talked about was flexibility. And, 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 a, and that's not just a theme for the classrooms, but it was very much for the, for the library. And if we look at this space, there's so much flexibility. And that's really what that, what that last space lacked back in the old school. I forgot the one thing. Bring the books back. Yes. yes <laughs> Bring the books right. back. Yes. It doesn't feel like a library. We finally have books again <laughs> right, in our library. Back. <laughs> so um, now what's different about a 21st century Library technology. What, what is? It? Yeah. So you, you used uh, the you know this idea of flexible modality. So you're finding in this space, you're finding space for individuals to quietly to quietly work, which has always traditionally been a, a place a place in a library. But you're also finding teamwork spaces. You're finding areas for sort of small group collaboration. You're finding areas for um, you know classes could come down and breakout spaces. You know you'll see that both during the day as well as after school. You can come down here into the evening and you'll still yeah. see kids using this space. Right now as we're filming, it's Correct. after school hours and we had to kind of carve away a little space for ourselves because behind the camera is full of kids and it's really great to see they're all really using the space and even after school hours. I think that's what you see. You know, What you end up seeing is you, you start to use spaces the way you used to use them and then eventually you discover you know, uses that you could never have predicted. And that's what we're seeing now. We're seeing kids use that space and kids own that space in a way that maybe we didn't even predict. But that was the point about the flexibility. So we are under construction with the middle school wing, which will be opening soon um, in this upcoming school year. And so this is currently being used by the high school mm -hmm. kids. What's going to happen when we have middle school kids in the building? Do they have their own library? So they do. So they, yeah, they will. Uh, we've been talking a lot about careful separations between the middle school and high school. So the middle school has their own library on the other side. Um, really, you know, when I think about this high school, I think about you know between uh, the, the pond being you know, a focal spot, 
the cafeteria and, and the library but, and the auditorium, but certainly on the middle school side, really the heart of that and the focal point of that space is really the library. A it's a beautiful space, mm -hmm. amazing, you know, two stories, amazing space, really at the heart of where the two hallways come together. Um, so they have their own, uh, their own uh, library, um, and it's really the same setup. It's a little bit smaller, but they also have those quiet spaces. They also will, to Bill's point, have access to the volumes that people are looking for, uh, and then also open collaborative spaces for classes to be able to come down and work there. So in terms of these quiet spaces and open spaces coexisting, uh, early on, and especially when we were doing the visioning, there were concerns about noise and how are we going to mitigate that and how are we going to provide actual quiet spaces. How is that working out? Well, I got, let me just step back and say that was a big issue, right? Yeah. So we tasked our design team to really ensure with their professionals, the uh, acoustic consultants, to make sure that quiet spaces are quiet and that team spaces didn't get too loud. Mm -hmm. When you look around here, there's a lot of glass, right? Because people wanted to see that mm -hmm. transparency. That's hard space. And then in the open space, it's open down to the second level. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a lot of work that went into making sure materials were picked, carpeting, soft cushions that would absorb. How do we do, Mike? What do you, what do you hear? I mean, it's crowded sometimes. Yeah, I mean, it's a very heavily used space, but it, it really does function as a library. You know, it's not silent, you know, but if you really needed to uh, find a quiet place to really just focus on your work, all those spaces are available. And then it's, um, you, know, it's you know, I think it's a traditional, maybe an outmoded um, concept of a library being a shh, quiet space. Right. And so what you're seeing is like it's also a hub of activity. I think kids are pretty respectful. So I, I don't know who the acoustic uh, engineers were, but they certainly had it figured out, and I think they did a really nice job of it. You know, one thing you bring up that I want to mention is when I walk through the space, you have places where you have tables, and kids are working together, yeah. but you also have places where you just have a couple of chairs, and they're in a nook, mm -hmm. or maybe just one for that person that just mm -hmm. wants to bury themselves into their homework assignment and get it done or something. So, and, and that seems to happen with other kids all around still. So I guess it is working because you, you got all of them mixed together. And yeah, I think your word modalities is right. You know, there are kids who are interpersonal, you know, they want, uh, there are kids who are intrapersonal and you know, there's kids, if, if depending on whatever your, um, your learning style is, you can find a space in this learning commons to, or in this learning space to really do the work that you need to do. So how many volumes do we have in the library? So I don't know the exact number. We, maybe we should count, but it, it's certainly tens of thousands. We had a lot of old space, uh, a lot of old volumes in the old space, and then I guess the important thing is that for those people that really wanted to see the volumes come back, there's capacity for a lot more. Mm -hmm. And so we've managed to bring the volumes back in, but there's also space to grow. And then the middle school, same thing. Very much so. Yep. Yeah. And, and you know, the the question is which of those volumes stay at the middle school, which will be brought up. Um, Karen Duff is certainly on top of that, but to the point where, you know, no matter how many tens of thousands we bring up, there's space for tens of thousands more. And then there's the public library across the street, right? We and I know we wanted to talk about oh, yeah. it's approved and construction starting soon. So how, Bill, is that going to relate to what we have here? So it's a separate library for sure, mm -hmm. uh, but it is across the street. Um, some people say, is it connected to the school library? It isn't. Why is it? Well, I mean, the, the primary is, is a question of security, right? We, you know, the, the schools nowadays, are there, you can't just walk in and, and, and use them. So the good news is that our students, if they wanted to go to the public library, have that space. Um, but the, that's really more of a community library, whereas this is really a student-driven uh, library and student-focused library. So it's primarily a safety item. Um, but also, you know, I think we have a good working relationship with Peter Strazario over at the public library. They have a youth librarian, and we work really closely with them. And so even though they're physically separate, I think there will be some synergy between the two. Yeah, two, two, two or so years, there'll be a new library across the street, yeah. just a phenomenal uh, experience for Belmont with, with these new facilities. So yeah. that's it's exciting. Three new, learning three, three new learning spaces in the, in the course of two years. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. Between the middle school, the high school, and the, and the, the library. Yeah. yeah, wonderful. Uh, and so our next video update will be about the cafeteria. Also has a clever new name. Um, it is our Central Commons. And so we will be talking about that next time. Um, in the meantime, thank you so much, Mike. You. And as always, Bill. And we will talk to you soon. Thank you.